I'm going to wear. Cause it looks so neat. Hi, oh my, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers I'm going to wear. To walk on the golden street. Oh, my golden slippers are laid away. Ain't going to wear till the wedding day. Fancy coat that I love so well. Wear so early in the morning. Have your golden slippers on. So clean. And your age must be just sweet 16. White kid gloves. Have to wear when you get up so early in the morning. your door. San Francisco, welcome me home again. I'm coming home to go Roman no more. This is San Francisco. These our times. San Francisco with its Golden Gate Park, its Knob Hill, its Chinatown, its world famous Golden Gate Bridge. And here on the corner of Geary and Market Streets is the famous fountain given to the city by Lotta Crabtree in the long ago. Lotta was called the Golden Girl. She was the most famous actress of her time. The war between the North and the South had begun, and there were many hardships. But little Lotta had talent and courage, and she sang and danced her way into the hearts of old California, and then the rest of the nation. It all began in the little town of Rabbit Creek, just a few miles from San Francisco. Slippers to golden slippers as wine to wear to walk the golden street. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Go away and let me be. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, oh them golden slippers. Golden slippers as wine to wear cause it looks so neat. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers as wine to wear. Well, come on, Papa. Oh, them golden slippers, oh, them golden slippers, golden slippers I'm going to wear, cause it's a... Mm, 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 mm. Walk, Walk the golden street. street. What do you mean, you two? Well, I gotta be getting at it. Getting at what? <laughs> Whatever's to be got at. <laughs> Why do you pin me down? Pin on? you down? I've been trying to pin you down for 20 years, and look where it's got me. <laughs> Always joking. <laughs> oh, not so fast, young lady. I'm sorry, Mama, but I gotta be going to school. You dance that dough flat, you can jolly well dance it up again. Here, let me just put this on. I don't know how. Well, then it's time you learn. Instead of wasting your time on them dad steps, it's time you learned a few useful things. Well, dancing can be useful. Look at Lola Montez. Lola Montez? I thought I forbid you to mention that creature's name. Oh, but she's coming to Rabbit Creek. She'll be here today. Oh, Mama, can I skip school so as I can go and see her come into town? She's due at noon. Oh, Mama, I just gotta see her. Just let me catch you skipping school and for such a reason. Why, if that notorious female crossed my path, I'd hide my eyes for fear I'd be struck blind by the evil wickedness of her, and I'd expect a daughter of mine to do the same. Now get busy on that dough. How do I do it? Just dance in the dough with your hands instead of your feet. Here, I'm going to turn my back. You are? Why? Is she really that terrible? 
Florida, what are you going to do? I'm going to look right at her, if it blinds me. But Lola Montez is a wicked woman, isn't she? The wickedest in the world. I'm going to be just like her. Lotta, wicked like Montez? Oh, no, talented like Montez. I'm going to be an actress, a dancer. But you can't be an actress without being wicked. Well, then I'll be wicked. You wouldn't know how. Well, I could learn, couldn't I? Oh, there she is! Sweet peoples, how can I thank you? Come tomorrow night to the Last Chance Saloon, and Lola will thank you the only way she know how. Yeah. I'm dancing for you. Yeah. Did you see her? She smiled at me. She smiled at me. Oh, golly, this was worth playing hooky for. Now, wait till the carriage gets in front of the saloon, you understand? All right. Welcome to the humble city of Rabbit Creek. The fame of your beauty has spread round the world. And now that I've seen you, there's nothing left to live for. Uh, look out, you're going to shoot it down. Goodbye, world. I've seen everything worth seeing. One last look, Miss Montez. My friend, if you must shoot yourself, please be quick about it. You're holding up my carriage. Don't kill yourself, man. You can see Miss Montez again. Tomorrow night at the Last Chance Saloon. Now give me that. No, no, let, let me, me die! die. <laughs> I have nothing to live for. Relax, Mark. The act's over. Oh. <clears throat> Come with me and have a drink. It'll brace you up. I don't drink. Shut up, you fool. We've got to get you into that saloon and out of that beard. And grab it. It's slipping. Get in there. Get in there. This is a place, folks. The Last Chance Saloon. Tomorrow night, the one and only Lola Montez, in person. Mart! Mart, you missed the excitement. A man just tried to shoot himself over Lola Montez. Oh, is that so? I wonder if anyone will ever shoot himself over me. Oh, I don't think so, Lotta. You're not the type. You got freckles. Is that so? Well, I bet under all of that powder and paint, Montez has got freckles, too. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing out of school? Oh, it's a holiday in honor of Lola Montez. You mean to tell me your teacher declared a holiday? Oh, certainly not. I declared it myself. Oh, you're playing hooky. And why not? This is a great occasion. But you wouldn't understand. You're not romantic. You wouldn't shoot yourself over a beautiful woman. Look, you want me to shoot myself? I really don't care what you do. Oh, I suppose you think I couldn't, huh? Well, I got a gun right here, and I can... Mart! Was that you? Yeah, it was. Why, Mart, I guess I've misjudged you. You are romantic. It was Sam's idea, sort of stunt to advertise the show. I might have known. Well, anyway, it worked. Look, the whole town's talking. And wait till the whole town's talking about how you fooled them. Oh, now, wait a minute. You mustn't tell anyone. Oh, I won't. I want condition. Yeah? You gotta fix it so I can see Lola Montez dance. But you're not allowed inside a saloon. I am, too. What's the lady's entrance for? But you're not a lady. Mark Taylor! I mean, you're just a little girl. I'm 16 going on 17, and girls my age are getting married every day. And boys my age, too. You want to get married, Lotta? Don't change the subject. Oh. I want to see Lola Montez dance, and you're singing in the show, and uh, I could kind of stand in the wings with you. Yeah, but supposing your mother found out. Oh, surely you're not afraid of Mama. Well, now, that's a silly question. Of course I'm afraid of her. Well, you better try being afraid of me for a change. 
Now that I've seen you, Lola Montez, there's nothing left to live for. Goodbye, world. Oh, and here comes Mrs. Probe, the biggest gossip in town. Oh, Mrs. Probe. Oh, you know that young man who tried Lotta, to shoot Lotta, him? I'll do it, I'll do it. I don't know how, but I'll do it somehow. That's better. Good morning, Marge. Oh, good morning, Mr. Crabtree. I guess you're all ready for the big show tonight, eh? Oh, I guess so. Mm -hmm. How's Miss Montez to work for? She's kind of odd. What do you mean, odd? Well, I sang her the two songs I learned for the show, and she liked them fine. Especially the one I'm supposed to sing to her. <laughs> that sounds all right. Yeah, but she cut it out. Later on, she cut the other one down to a chorus to be sung off stage. <laughs> well, at least you'll be heard. Yeah, but at the last minute, she decided maybe I better not sing at all. Maybe just play the guitar. I didn't know you played the guitar. I don't. That's why I say she's odd. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Good morning, Cornelius. You were up early this morning. Oh, you know the old saying, early to rise and late to bed. Yeah, it makes a man healthy, wealthy, and dead. What are you all got up for, Cornelius? Ah, today is a day when the mercenary mistress of this establishment collects her little stipend for my luxurious bachelor days in the attic. Yeah, and as usual, you'll be locked out. Precisely, precisely. And without access to my very extensive wardrobe, which I have spent a lifetime to acquire, uh, but I do not intend to suffer that inconvenience this time. I know <laughs> why I, I am practically standing in the middle of my trunk right now. Okay. You better make yourself scarce before my old lady sees you. An excellent suggestion, my friend, which I shall act upon at once. I, uh, I'll see you at the last chance, Crabtree. <laughs> Today? <laughs> I am starting early on my research. Oh, yeah. Hey, what does he mean, research? Well, you see, Cornelius and I are working on a little proposition. Hey, might interest you, Mart. Uh -huh, sorry, I can't afford it. Who mentioned money? Well, you mentioned Cornelius. That's the same thing. Well, we are taking in a few partners. That's what I figured. Listen, son. A hundred dollar investment will make you rich. Then you can tell people like Miss Montez where to go. She's going to Australia. Well, that's close. Well, anyway, I thought you weren't supposed to gamble. Remember Mrs. Crabtree's orders? Look, this ain't gambling. This is more like an investment. Crabtree! Yeah. Yes, dear? I don't want the paying boarders pestered about putting money into your schemes. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to Mr. Crabtree. He won't get any money out of me. I'm tight as a tick. Oh, don't brag about it. You leave Mart alone. You're a fine example for any young man, I must say. Lazy, good for nothing, irresponsible. My darling, you forgot shiftless. None of your sarcasm, Crabtree. Ow. Every time I go to shave, Mary Ann yells at me. I'd do better if I was shaving with a broken bottle. And furthermore, Crabtree. Uh, see what I mean? You can tell your friend Cornelius that I've locked his room and hidden his clothes, and he can get them back if and when he pays his bill. Oh, Miss Crabtree. Yes? Uh, where's Lotta? Is she up yet? Up yet? She's been out of bed since the crack of dawn and off to the big rocks. Oh, my gosh, Mrs. Crabtree. You didn't let her go up to the mountains alone. It ain't safe. Oh, she's got her two dogs with her, and they wouldn't let any harm come to Lotta. Crabtree? <laughs> Fooled you that time. Get that shaving over, Wolf, and get the wood box filled. Yes, dear. Huh. Oh, please, please, no more, my flowers. Carlotta is exhausted. But because you have been such a wonderful audience, she will sing for you one more song. What shall it be? Why in the gay time of sunshine and daytime do I wish the day to depart? Why is the night time forever the bright time for love to steal into my romance in every night underneath the light of the bright California 
to kiss the clinging vines neath the bright California moon. Then I ask my star above, send the love I'm dreaming of, and we'll share lovely vision with a lovely voice. <laughs> My name's Tom Richmond, ma'am, at your service. My first engagement in Grass Valley, and already a gentleman at the stage, though. Are you an actress? Oh, of course. What did you think I was? <laughs> well, among these majestic rocks and in that gossamer gown, I fancied you were the spirit of the mountainside, or fairy princess, perhaps. Golly! Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> how prettily you put it, sir. <laughs> I'm really quite flattered. Well, I'll meet. Why, thank you. So you were just an actress, not a princess. Disappointed? Not at all. I'm delighted. I wouldn't know how to talk to a princess. Well, you do very well. <laughs> Are you appearing in Grass Valley? Oh, dear me, no. This dear sweet village couldn't afford Carlotta. That's my name. Carlotta, Carlotta. Well, they do well to afford the lesser stars like Lola Montez. She's appearing at the last chat saloon right now. Yes, I know. I saw Miss Montez once in Alabama several years ago. That's where I'm from, Alabama. <laughs> my father forbid me to go, but I snuck off anyway. When I got to my seat in the theater, who do you think was sitting next to me? Your father? Well, that's right. How'd you guess? Well, maybe sometime I'll appear in Alabama, and you and your father will come to see me. Well, I hope so. But I don't count on waiting until then. That is, with your permission, ma'am. Oh, I'm not a man, Mr. Richmond. I'm a miss. I beg your pardon. It's merely a word of respect and admiration. In Alabama, that is. If you're walking towards the village, I'd be proud to walk you home, ma'am. Oh, no. Well, you see, I'm, I'm going in that direction. I'm stopping at the Crabtree boarding house. Well, then I'd be proud to call for you there and take you out to whatever there is in Rabbit Creek to take you out to. Oh, would you really? I mean, I'm simply dying to see that dear, sweet Lola Montez. But ladies just aren't allowed in the last chat saloon unescorted. Well, that is, ladies who want to remain ladies. Well, I'd be happy to take you. Well, I, I wouldn't want you calling for me at the boarding house. I'll tell you, I'll meet you at an appropriate spot. Let's see, there's a wishing well underneath the pepper tree near the mission. I'll meet you there at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock it is. Now I must go. Goodbye, Mr. Richard.
A roulette wheel is liable to have to turn a thousand times before any definite trend develops. Yeah, but are you certain the scheme of yours is going to work? Certain? Of course I'm certain. I've told you a thousand times that back in Ohio, I was a wheelwright. A wheel is a wheel, my friend, whether it's on a roulette table or a wagon. Sooner or later, it gets lopsided, and the same number starts coming up. So all we have to do is to be present and find out which number before the manager does. And presto, we're rich. <laughs> yeah, but is it honest? Honest? When you say that word, smile, partner. 26, black. 26, you see? It's repeating. <laughs> Gee, I'd like to strike it, Rich. You know, I, I brought Mary Ann and Lotta all the way out from New York promising them all kinds of big things. And all she has is that boarding house. A lot of hard work. She works so hard sometimes, it just makes me tired just watching her. Mama, you should have let me do the dishes tonight. You go on to bed. You're all worn out. It's cheaper this way. Saves breakage. Mama, what was it like when you first met Papa? I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, please do. Was he young and handsome with wonderful manners? Well, he was young and handsome, wore shoes. I don't recall any manners whatsoever. Well, didn't you know right off that he was the man you wanted to marry? I didn't know anything. In fact, I think I was asleep or out of my mind. Didn't wake up until somebody hit me in the face with a handful of rice. I've been awake ever since, though. Oh, Mama, I love you and Papa so much. Oh, whatever's got into you? You've been acting kind of feverish all day. Feverish? No. Just alive. So alive, I'm afraid I'll wake up and find it's all a dream. My goodness me, that's quite a speech for a child. But I'm not a child anymore. Tonight, I feel as old and as wise as the wind. You could ask me questions the Sphinx couldn't answer, but I would answer them. Hmm, well, then answer me this. Where's your father? Not it. You're old enough to understand one thing. If you ever want to be happy, don't marry a man who gambles or who expects to get something in this world without working for it. I won't, Mama. I promise. Hi, Papa. Hello, dear. I'm sorry I missed supper. I, I got to talking about the war. Well, looks as though Mr. Lincoln has finally won himself a battle. Hmm. Three-day battle at Gettysburg. Hmm. Yeah, we were losing for a while there, you know. <laughs> you know, the rebels almost took Washington. Crabtree, you didn't come home to talk about the war. That I know. Honey, get your father's supper out of the oven. I kept it warm for him. No, oh, uh, never mind, lad. I, I had a bite in town. With Cornelius, I suppose. What's the Rabbit Creek tycoon using for money now? Uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Lotta, run along like a good little girl. We, I want to talk to your mother. Oh, yes, Papa. G good night, Mama. I, it's almost not. I mean, it's late. I, it's bedtime. Listen, Marianne. Cornelius has a surefire scheme. All he needs is a few hundred dollars to put it across, I know. Well, yes, but we've got to have it tonight. You and Cornelius, a fine pair. For the poorhouse. I'm tired and I'm going to bed. You coming? Later. It's no use. She wouldn't even listen. A uh, woman never can see the forest for the tree. Here, here. Here, take a look at take a look at those numbers. Look at them. The wheel is slipping. And what are we doing about it? Nothing. A fortune sliding right through our fingers. Well, what can we do? You, uh, you, you own this house, don't you? Now, oh, wait a minute. I wouldn't touch that. What if we lost it? Bradbury, you still down there? Yes, Marianne. Just attending to a few things. What things? She's always pinning me down. 
Just things, Mary Ann, just things. Say, you know Simon, he's had his eye on this boarding house for some time. Why, he'd loan you money in a minute. Mary Ann, I'm going for a little walk. A walk? A walk to where? See what it means. Just a walk, God darn it. Just a common, ordinary, everyday walk. <laughs> I didn't try to pick any up with my teeth. Never touch my monies. Never, never, never. Shall we go? I think maybe we'd better. What are you doing here? Oh, hello, Mr. Taylor. Don't you, Mr. Taylor, me. Who let you in? I brought the young lady. Do you have any objection? You bet I have. She's got no business in a place like this. If her mother ever finds out... Mark Taylor, you have no right making a scene. I've never been so humiliated in my whole life. Humiliated? What do you think I am? Supposing your teacher found out. You'd be expelled from school. Sixteen years old. A baby. I'm going into saloons with... with strangers. Now look here, sir. I resent your attitude toward Miss Carlyle. Miss who? Oh, I suppose she's been telling you she's an actress. She's always pulling that one. <laughs> she is an actress, Mr. Taylor. Believe me. This is entirely my fault. She wanted to see Miss Montez dance, and I wanted to bring her. There's been no harm done. She's only 16, Mr. Whoever you are. Richmond. Tom Richmond from Alabama. For your information, sir, down our way, a girl 16 is going on being an old maid. Come on, lot. I'll take you home. Mark Taylor, I'll never forgive you for this as long as I live. I hate you, and I don't want to go home. Where do you want to go? 
Roberto. No place that you could take me? If you wanted to see Miss Montez dance, why didn't you come backstage like we planned? I promised to let you hide in the wings. Mr. Richmond arranged for me to see the show like a lady. And then you came along and spoiled it all. You're not a lady just because you're wearing your mother's wedding dress. Does Mrs. Crabtree know you're in that? Of course not. She thinks I'm in bed. And that's just where you ought to be, Miss Carlisle. Go ahead and make fun of me. At least there was someone who thought of me as a woman, if only for a few hours. Gee, I could think of you as a woman, too, but I was kind of saving that for later. Are you the proprietor around here, sir? That's me. How do you operate your table? You a professional gambler? I am. Where's your feather? I have it. Pick your own table and play your own game. The house is cut as a straight $20 a night. Fair enough. In advance. Twenty-six, even. On <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? What are you doing? I'm cashing in. We've pushed our luck far enough. Luck? Why, this is science. Luck, science, or good red herring. Look, I'm getting out while they're getting it. Hey, old partner, we've only just begun. Enough is enough. Now, there's plenty here to pay off the loan and give us both a sizable stake. Look, you can do what you please with your share. For once, I'm going home to Mary Ann with money. Crabtree, you're a fool. Me. I tell you, Crabtree, you're quitting in the face of fortune. What's a thousand dollars when you can double it, triple it? Why, you could buy Mary Ann a dozen boarding houses. A half a dozen, anyway. You could send a lot of back east to school. I'm only thinking of you, Crabtree. We'll be back later. I hate to bother you with such a small amount. Be quiet so we don't wake up Mama. Give me a match and I'll light the lamp. If Mama ever found out where I'd been tonight, she'd give me one of her famous tongue lashings for sure. Oh, Mama's old fashioned and she lives in the past. After all, this is 1863. It certainly is. It is also 12 o'clock. I know what time it is, March. You needn't remind. Where have you been, young lady? And in that shameful getup. Shameful? Why, this is your wedding dress, Mama. Yes, but when I wore it, there was a yoke up to here. Oh, I threw that away. What's the meaning of this, Mart? I thought I could trust you. I might have known that working in that saloon, you'd pick up some ideas. You libertine, you, you snake in the grass, you despoiler of youth. Who, me? Oh, don't be silly, Mama. Mart just brought me home. And the only thing he despoiled was my evening. I rescued her from the clutches of a very suspicious-looking stranger. He wasn't anything of the kind. He was a gentleman from the South, and he treated me like a grown-up lady. He took me to the Last Chance Saloon. You call that treating you like a lady? I wanted to see Lola Montez, and I'm glad I did. Mama, they threw gold at her. Why, she must get hundreds of dollars every time she performs, and she didn't do a thing that I can't do. I could have them throwing gold at me. It's no trick being an actress. I proved that this afternoon. Mr. Richmond never doubted it for a moment. Oh, Mama, you just gotta let me go on the stage. What stage? Any stage, any place where there are miners with sacks of gold and watches and gold teeth. Gold teeth? Yes, Mama, they even threw their teeth at Montez. Lotter, you all right? Let me feel your brow. Oh, I'm all right, Mama. I tell you, there's a fortune waiting for us. We could tour the mining camps to sort of get used to the idea. And Mark could sing and Sam would just love to go along, I know. Yeah, those miners are star for entertainment. Digging all day up to their knees in cold mountain water. Never see a female. And you could play your guitar, Mama, and, and, and we could put on a wonderful show all our own. Yeah. I haven't played that guitar in ten years. It ain't even got strings. They're, they're in your bureau, Mama. A whole set. But remember, you'll just be background for me. I'm going to be the star of this show. We'll start in Quincy and see how they like it. And now, we'll wait a minute. No, you listen, Mama. You've been slaving in this boarding house for years. And what have you got to show for it? We've got a roof over our heads. That is not enough. It's enough for me, as long as there's plenty to eat and a roof over our heads. Hi, Papa. I had it all in my hand. A thousand dollars. Over and above the loan. A thousand dollars. All for you, Marianne. Then all of a sudden, I, I saw two thousand. 
Then 3,000. I could have dumped it out on the table here. I just wanted to see your face after all these years. Well, here's my face, but what in tarnation are you talking about? I heard you when I, when I came in. A roof over our head. We haven't got that roof, Mary Ann. It now belongs to a Mr. Simons, friend of Cornelius. Geez, I, I wish. You mean you lost the boarding house? Oh, oh, you didn't. Oh, Papa, that's wonderful. Don't mind her. She's running a temperature. Don't you see, Mama? Now we'll have to do something. We'll have to leave Rapid Creek. We'll take Mart and Sam, and Papa can dance. At his age, I'd hate to think what they can throw at him. What's this all about? I don't understand. Right? Papa, we're going into show business. We'll take the mules, and we'll fix up the wagon, and the dogs, they can dress up the parade, just like Montez. Mark, you talk to Sam tomorrow morning, and, and maybe he'll bring his boys along, because we'll need music. Oh, golly, Papa, you brought home more than $1,000. You brought home my future. I've heard enough of this nonsense. You can all stay down here and go stark staring mad. I'm going to bed. That's a good idea, because we've got a lot of stuff to do. Lotta, you take some quinine, and Crabtree, you can sleep on the sofa. I don't want you to come within 10 miles of me. Mama, they're in your top bureau drawer, Mama. What? Y your guitar strings. Don't worry, Papa. Everything's going to be all right. I've failed you, baby. Your mother was right. I'm no good. Shiftless and irresponsible. And now this wild scheme of yours. Why, it's all my fault. And when I think of you traipsing through those mining... Nonsense, camps, Papa. It'll be fun. I wonder what he'll think when he sees me on a real stage. I wonder if he'll think of me as a grown-up lady again. Who? Oh, a gentleman I met today. With such lovely manners. He's from Alabama. I wonder what he's doing out here. Well, everybody comes to California sooner or later. Even gentlemen. Mama's got a beautiful voice. Yes, your mother's a fine woman, Lotta. Strong. Reliable. She's gonna take good care of you, too. Well, I love you, too, Papa. I wouldn't want to go without you. I, I'm going up down a little way with Cornelius. We're gonna try the gold fields again. My little girl. Listen, honey. You do what your mother tells you here. Always. You're gonna be fine. Just fine. home we've ever had, baby. My mother sent that furniture around the horn. Oh, we'll have a fine home someday, Mama, with the best furniture money can buy. We'll have horsehair sofas and uh, rosewood beds with headboards seven feet high. Hmm. Sound like your father. Do you think we'll ever see him again, Mama? 
Well, that depends, Lotta. We're a failure in this crazy business. Well, who knows? If we make good, we'll be easy to find. Then we'll make good. I'll see to that. We're all loaded and ready to go. Good morning, Mr. Richard. Well, good morning. Is this a Crabtree boarding house? Very lovely actress, the name of Carlotta Carlisle, recommended this place. Since I was needing a place to stay, I thought perhaps well, I Well, you're could... about three days too late. The boarding house is sold, and we're taking off for other parts. I'm sorry, Mr. Richmond. Lotta, who is this fella? Tom Richmond, ma'am, from Alabama. Certainly a fancy outfit you have there. Looks like you're aiming to put on a show. Well, that's what we're aiming to do. I told you I was an actress, Mr. Richmond. Didn't you believe me? Well, I don't know. I understood you were just a schoolgirl, Miss Carlisle. Oh, that. Well, uh, that was just one of my many characterizations. What is this Carlisle? My daughter's name is Crabtree, Lotta Crabtree. Oh, well, it's kind of a silly name. You well, see, it's I... it's a good name, miss. It's real American. You really think so? Any name's a good name if you make it famous enough. I hope you make it real famous. Why, thank you, sir. We're starting in Quincy, just 20 miles over the mountain. I don't suppose you'll be down that way. Well, what do you know? Just on my way to Quincy. Planning on leaving tomorrow. Now, isn't that a coincidence? No. Hey, we gotta get started. Tell that fella goodbye and let's go. Why, Mark, you remember Mr. Richmond? I certainly do. It's nice to see you again and goodbye and good luck and let's go. And good luck to you, Mr. Taylor. Thanks. Well, we can't wait all day. Let's go. We're all set. Let's go. Goodbye, Mr. Richmond. Goodbye, Miss Crabtree. Oh! Quincy, our first stop. Looks sort of lively at that. I'll bet that crowd is hungry for entertainment. All right, boys, get the top down. We're going into Quincy with a bang. For entertainment, I mean. Oh, I'll bet we'll pack him in tonight. Pack him in where? Don't worry, Mama. He'll find something. Well, then let's go find someplace. Then let's do something to get them excited. Get the ballyhoo started. Ladies and gentlemen of this great and bustling metropolis, you are about to have the privilege of witnessing a rare and unusual spectacle. A huge company of players gathered at tremendous expense for your approval. Come on, come all, and join the throng and see our opera on wings of gold. Mabile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento, e vi pensiero. La donna è mabile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento. And then in a twinkling we change the scene. We're off to the land of the pretty Colleen's. All those endearing young charms Which I gaze on 
so funny today. And speaking of charm, here she is, that star of stars, the golden girl, little Lotta. Oh, kiss me quick and go, my honey, kiss me quick and go. That's all. Bring your gal and your ma and your pa and your sisters and your brothers and your uncles and your aunts and Join the party, chill. Join the party, chill. Join the party. We're gonna have a happy time tonight. Gonna have a happy time. Gonna have a happy time tonight. Gonna have a happy time. Hey! Thank you, thank you. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, Miss Lotta Crabtree and her troop of troubadours. You'll see the greatest show you've ever seen. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the star of our show, Miss Lotta Crabtree. Yeah! Tossing crowd to me. Well, that's because I'm not a gold tossing gal to them. Not in this thing. The place is crowded. Mm, but not very enthusiastic. They'll toss that gold now.
help Mark sing that song before we're all torn to pieces. And don't you dare twitch a muscle while you're singing it. You did get away from your mother for a minute. We're making progress. Mama's determined to treat me like a little girl. Lotta! Oh, they're looking for me already. We're going to hardtack, dry bed, Devil's Creek in Fresno. Oh, when I see you. I haven't missed a town yet, have I? I suppose you have a girl back in Alabama. No special girl. Oh, but there are girls back there. The population's mixed, male and female, about half and half. Lotta! Why didn't you answer me? I've been searching for you everywhere. Look at me, I'm frantic. You're frantic? Well, what about me? I was accosted by two drunken miners, and Mr. Richmond saved me. Beat them both to a pulp. Gosh, are you all right now, Lotta? Well, not quite, Mr. Taylor. Miss Crabtree is suffering from severe shock. Shock? Well, maybe we'd better find a doctor. Oh, well, in Alabama, sir. When a lady's insulted by rough ends, we find the best medicine, after we kill the scoundrels, of course, is the protective arms of a father, a brother, or the next of kin. Well, yeah, well, you ain't none of those. Yeah, well, then this isn't Alabama. Don't you think you ought to see a doctor, Lotta? Mr. Richmond knows best. Now. Lotta Crabtree, are you all right? Well, she's suffering from severe shock. Well, she was. Shock? Oh. Well, now, Mr. Richmond, I'd like a word with you. Mark, take Lotta to the wagon and get ready to leave. Yes, ma'am. Mama, you're not going to scold Tom. All he did was rescue me. For which we're all very thankful. Now, run along, Lotta. Oh, but, Mama... Run along, Lotta. I'll come straight to the point. Mr. Richmond, you've been following us from town to town. Following you, ma'am? Well, what time did you get in town today? At precisely 2 o'clock. Why? 
I was here at 12 noon. That makes it look more like you were following me. For the past two weeks now, you've been at almost every performance. I can only conclude that it's because of my daughter. That's partly correct, ma'am. I must tell you that it's my intention to put a stop to this before it goes any further. You mean I mayn't even look at her? Oh, now, don't go saying it's a free country. <laughs> no, ma'am. I'd like to explain that I've been coming to your show as much for business as personal reasons. Business? That's right. You collected the crowds and I gambled with them for their money. What they had left after your collections. You're a gambler? That's right. I only wear it when I'm working. Oh, now I understand. We bring in the sheep and you shear them. <laughs> well, that's about it, ma'am. Well, you'll have to forgive me if I'd known you were a... I'd not have worried. Lotta and I have had experience with gamblers. Well, now that we understand each other, you can come to the show as often as you like. Well, well thank you, ma'am. And good night. Good night, Mr. Edgeman. Maybe he's not in town. Well, if he's not, it's because someone told him to stay away. Now, see here, Lotta. I'm as far as I'm concerned, there will be no performance tonight. Lotta Crabtree, you get up out of that chair before I tan your hide. I'll get up out of it when Tom Richmond is sitting in his, and not one minute before. That's your father's side of the family speaking. Mrs. Crabtree, what are we going to do? Go out and announce that Miss Lotta Crabtree has just thrown up her career. But we can't. There's a packed house out there. They'll tear the place apart, and us too. Please, Lotta, you got to... If you find Tom Richmond or I don't fight! March. Go out and look in every corner of this town until you find him and bring him here. Yes, ma'am. Now, what? Uh, I don't care. I want to see him. The women. Please, it wasn't for their ears, you couldn't tell them from mules. Oh, you're late, ma'am. What held you up? The Spaniard, that's what held us up. Him and about six others stripped us clean. Anybody hurt? Not a shot fired. Did he get the army gold? He sure did. That's why he held us up. Pull out as soon as you make a change. Mr. Richmond, oh boy, am I glad I found you. We've been looking all over for you. Lotta won't go on the stage unless you're in the audience. I'm afraid I'm not in the mood to watch a show tonight. Oh, please, Mr. Richmond, you gotta help us. That audience is ready to tear the place apart. Well, in that case, I'd better go with you. Now, I hope we can get the show started. Well, Mr. Richmond, we were afraid you wouldn't get here. I'm sorry if my being late's inconvenienced you, ma'am. Now I'd like to ask you a favor. I knew you'd be wanting it. You lost your gambler's feather, and luckily I found it. It wasn't that I wanted to ask about. Well, of course it was. A professional gambler can't be without his feather, now can he? Lotta, can I speak to you alone? I expect to be leaving California soon. It's very important. Before you go, Mr. Richmond, I think it's only fair that you tell Lotta what you told me about why you've been following our show. After all, a young girl's head is easily turned when she thinks a romantic young man has been following her around the country. That's what I want to explain. If I could just see you alone. That will not be necessary, Mr. Richmond. I think it's already quite clear that we brought out the crowds and you only followed us in order to fleece them. You're very unfair, ma'am. If you'd just let me explain. I don't think you could add anything, Mr. Richmond. It's all very clear. I'm only sorry that I didn't wake up sooner. You, you have to excuse us. We have a show to do. Good night, Mr. Richmond, and goodbye. Sweetly 
eyes sparkin', the folks had gone to bed. They heard a footstep on the stair, and what do you think she said? Kiss me quick and go, my honey. Kiss me quick and go. To treat surprise and prying eyes. Kiss me quick and go. He kissed her once, he kissed her twice. She waited for the third, but he was quite afraid to try. Until this song he heard, oh, kiss me quick and go, my honey. Kiss me quick and go. To cheat surprise and prying eyes. Kiss me quick and go. Ho, ho! Kiss me quick and go. He asked her if she'd wed, said he, I'll get the preacher man. And what do you think she said? Wow! Kiss me quick and go, honey. Kiss me quick and go. To cheat surprise and cry. Kiss me quick and go. Kiss me quick and go, honey. Kiss me quick and go. Don't hesitate, it's getting late. Kiss me quick and go. and take it like this. He's only the first man in your life. There'll be dozens like him. <laughs> but I don't want that, Mama. I want Tom. Oh, come on now, Lotta. Don't be a crybaby. A grown-up lady wouldn't behave like this about a man. She wouldn't? No. Fix your makeup now. Oh, you look awful. I don't care what I look like. Those miners don't look at my face anyway. Oh, Mama, I want to go back to Rabbit Creek after the next dance. Can't we go back to Rabbit Creek, Mama? Maybe just for a rest. I'm all worn out. Oh, that's not a bad idea, Lotta. I, I'll tell Martin. Excuse me, there's someone out here to see you, Lotta. If it's that Tom Richmond, tell him once and for all that well, I... it ain't Mr. Richmond. It's a Union Army officer. Seems awful anxious to see you, Lotta. <laughs> Another stage door, Johnny. We'll tell him we don't see anybody and get rid of him. He's a very handsome man. Tell him to come in. I'll be happy to see him. Lotta! Mama, it's time I had a few callers. How do you think Lola Montez met all those crowned heads and such? Now, you leave the room, Mama, and, and, and run along. Let me behave like an actress. Have you gone daft? I'm staying right here. There's nothing he can say to you that your mother can't hear. Show him in. Uh, you wanted to see me, sir? Well, not exactly, miss. It was Mrs. Crabtree I was asking for. Well, I, I guess you're not the only one, Lotta. Now, leave the room, dear. Just run along. Now, surely, Mother, this gentleman has nothing to say to you that your daughter can't hear. I've asked a lot of questions around town about you two. 
Want to make sure you're both loyal northerners. Heard you were born and raised in New York. That's my state, too. And I guess you want this war over as quickly as I do. Well, you can help. What can we do? You're going to Fort Yucca from here, I believe. That's our plan, yes. I want you to deliver $10,000 in gold to the Army Paymaster at Fort Yucca. What? Oh, now, wait a minute. We're a show troop, not the Wells Fargo Express. That's just it. Very few shipments of gold have got through in the last year because it went by Wells Fargo Express. On account of the Spaniard. You've heard of him. Everybody has. This shipment must get through. We'll put sandbags in the Wells Fargo box. The real gold will go with you. Well, I, I don't know. It's, it's a big responsibility. Mama, I think it's <laughs> thrilling. I thought it might appeal to you, you being actors and with imagination and all that. We'll do it. Now, wait a minute, Lotta. How can we hide $10,000 in gold? We'll find a way. That's what I mean, imagination. Just so you feel safe, I'll trail you with a couple of my men. We'll never be more than a mile away. I'll have the gold here when you're ready to leave. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mama, $10,000 in gold, Mama. Isn't it exciting? Here, let me give you no, a hand. No, no, I can manage it. Let's get ready to pull out. Well, that's that. Costumes, props, makeup. And... My knitting. Did you pack my knitting? Oh, heavens, it's on my dressing table. I'll get it. All right, dear. I couldn't let you go without explaining. We're going to Fort Yucca, in case you'd like to keep up with us. I hear the gambling is pretty good there. Lotta. You don't believe that gambling story, do you? I had to tell your mother something. But you are a gambler. And you're an actress. What does that mean? Can't you think of me as just Tom? You're Lotta, I'm Tom, a fellow in love with a girl. What does it matter whatever else I am? Oh. So now you're in love with me. Do I have to prove that? Let me go! Tom! There. Am I a gambler or just Tom? Are you an actress or just my girl? Am I in love with you? Couldn't you prove it a little more? I love you, Lotta. That's all you need to know. Someday I'll explain all the rest. This gambling business and everything. It's all mixed up in the war, honey. Why should you bother your pretty little head with anything so ugly as war? Well, Tom, I'm... I'm very much concerned about the war. And very much involved in it, too. Really? The Union Army is trusting me with $10,000 in gold. And I'm taking it through to the Army Paymaster at Fort Yucca. Lotta. It's true. I wish you hadn't told me this. Don't worry, darling. I'll be safe. It'll be thrilling. Lotta. Listen, honey. Listen to me. No matter what happens, believe one thing about me. I love you. In spite of the war, in spite of everything, I love you. Oh, darling, that sounds like goodbye. It is goodbye. I'm going to San Francisco. I just came in to tell you. I won't see you in Fort Yucca. I'm afraid not. Won't I ever see you again? Yes, Lana. You will. You will. Oh, darling.
lonesome pine seem to kiss the clinging vines neath a bright California moon. Then I ask my star above, send the love I'm dreaming of, and we'll share A very beautiful song, senor. The chief enjoyed it very much. <laughs> what do you want from us? Music, amigo, music. We are starved for music. In San Joaquin, we saw your show. But we do not see very much. Maybe you do more show for us now, eh? With the beautiful senorita. Oh, sure, sure. We'll give him a show, won't we, Lada? We will not. Lada, control yourself. This is the Spaniard. I don't care who it is. Why should we sing for bandits? Tell them to go about their business and tell them to go rob a stagecoach. You tell them. I don't feel so good. She will not sing for us. That is too bad. We wanted a song, senorita. Before we take your gold, we'd like first your golden voice. Gold? What gold? We have no gold. We work for our money. Yeah, we work for our money. Then so do we. Senor, isn't my golden voice enough? Let me sing for you. Something Spanish to remind you of your homeland. Do we know anything Spanish? Or perhaps the Spaniard from Alabama would rather have me sing Dixie. He's a Spaniard. Search the camp. Search the camp? What do you mean? Take it slow. Maybe you'd be more comfortable over here. Vamos! Vamos! Lotta. Lotta. I have to take that gold. I'm sorry you got mixed up in this, but I've got no choice. I'm a soldier, a captain of the Confederate Army. First a gambler, and then a bandit, and now a soldier. Well, really, Mr. Richmond, I can't keep up with you. I'm not a gambler. I'm not even an outlaw. At least I don't consider myself one. I'm a Confederate officer with orders to raid gold shipments. The South is losing a lot of because the North is rich. Our soldiers are ragged and barefoot. They're going into battle that way. Ready to the West to help the South. Now I'm leaving. Where will you go? San Francisco first. Find a ship that'll run the blockade and take us home. To fight. That's right. But when the war is over, I'll come back. I promise. How will you find me? <laughs> like finding a lighted lamp in a window. Your name's bound to be up in big letters somewhere. Wherever it is, I'll find it. There is no gold here, Manuel. No, of course not. A ver, busca aquí. Oh, I don't see this. Ayúdale. This is very heavy. Hey, that's our lunch. What kind of bandits are you anyway? <laughs> very expensive diet, senor. Hey, I thought it was ham and beans. We couldn't eat that stuff. Union soldiers are deposited. They are on their way here. Well, Tom, Tom. Oh, Tom, I'm sorry I didn't sing Dixie. There'll be another time. If you just remember, I love you, Lotta. Was here. The gold, did they get the gold? They sure did. But how'd he know? Oh, never mind that. Go get them. If you hurry and catch them, they just went in that direction. Oh, 
Donna, why did you do that? Why did I let her? Oh, this is too much for me. Let's pack up and be off. We can't get to Fort Yucca too soon to suit me. We're not going to Fort Yucca, and we're not going to Rabbit Creek. Where are we going? San Francisco. Oh, Mark, what did he say? It's no use, Lotta. They won't even let me see Mr. McGuire. He's holed up in his office. Oh, why don't you face facts, Lotta? You sang for Mr. McGuire last night, and he don't like you. There's plenty of other places in San Francisco. It's got to be the Bella Union. But why? It's the only place that puts the actress's name up in big letters outside, and I've just got to have my name like that. So as everyone will know, I'm in town. So Tom Richmond will know that's what she means. I'll see Mr. McGuire myself. You wait here. You don't raise your 600. I'll see you. Clean me like a fleet skull in the Mojave. That's all I own. Well, it was a good game. Well played in the long run. That's what counts. Not necessarily to win, but uh, to play it well. That is the ultimate satisfaction. Shut up. What did you say? He said, shut up. That's what I thought he said. Uh, 9.15. Not a bad night's work. I'll give you a chance to get even one of these days. You haven't got all I own. There's 30,000 or more there. I'll play you for that against the Bella Union. You mean the place, the business, the building? The whole shooting match. Oh, no. Wouldn't that be something? No, oh, no, Mr. McGuire, I couldn't use it. I'm satisfied with this. Yeah? That girl's there again who sunk for you last night. Says she's got to see you. What girl? Oh, that girl. What do I hire you for? Get rid of her. Mr. McGuire, I want to know why you won't let me sing at the Bella Union. Lotta. I want you... Oh, Papa. And Cornelia. Hello, dear. Mama's outside. Oh. And Mark. Oh, honey. I've been hearing all about you. How you've been doing all right in those heaven-forsaken towns. We did better than all right. And now I'm ready for San Francisco. <laughs> Only Mr. McGuire doesn't seem to think so. What's the matter? Don't you like my daughter? I've got nothing against her, but she can't sing worth sour apples. Is that so? What are you, a critic or something? Why, I ought to bust you right in the nose. Now, calm down, Crabtree, and watch your talk. Just because she's your daughter... Look, McGuire, does the offer still go? The Bella Union against my 30,000? You're darn tootin' it still go. Well, then you've got yourself a bet. One hand, a five-card draw. Papa, you're gonna play poker at a time like this when... Well, listen, honey, this is for you. If I win, you sing at the Bella Union. Now, go on outside and wait. Go on, like a good girl. By the way, don't tell your mother you saw me. Not yet. Cut for deal. Lot of crab tree. If you don't tell me why we're waiting here. Oh, she get more like your father every day. Now, see here, young lady. We're not going to spend good money just to sit here all day. Mark paid the driver. We don't need him anymore. Marianne. Well, Crabtree, you are looking very well. <laughs> you look good to me, too, Marianne. I didn't say that. Papa, what happened inside? Oh, uh, inside. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. McGuire drew a full house. Oh, Papa. Yeah. But your father drew four aces. Papa! <laughs> Does that beat a full house? Well, it always has. <laughs> Listen, baby, you can go in there and start singing any time you want. Oh, what is this? Mrs. Crabtree, I want you to meet Mr. Crabtree, the new owner of the Bella Union and my employer. I start tomorrow night. Oh, be careful, John. You're ruining my veil. Did you hear that? She called me John. After 20 years, she's finally learned my first name. <laughs> Why, I'll buy you a hundred veils, Marianne, and a hundred bonnets to go with them. Papa! Oh, the golden slippers, oh, come on, Mary, go. The golden slippers, I'll find a way to walk the golden street. Oh, the golden slippers, oh.
you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Lotta will be back just as soon as she changes her costume. You've really been a wonderful audience, and you're making it very difficult for us to leave San Francisco. Yes, this is our final performance at the Bella Union. Tomorrow, we start moving eastward to New York. But in our hearts, we can never leave California. You'll always be with us. Here's another song, Mark. The ladies want a song from you. to you, Laura. But you don't hear him. With my you to meet the man who taught me to sing and dance. He's the owner of the Bella Union. He's an old minstrel man. And he's also, I'm very proud to say, my father, John Crabtree. <laughs> Beneath the bright California moon, He'll make a fool of himself, sure. Send the one I'm dreaming of And we'll share the rare delight In the magic of the night Neat the bright California moon You'll be snug as a bug in the still of the night When you're under the wonderful thrill of the light the best in the east of the west, you can give it a set. You can leave all the rest to a wonderful moon. If you're sighing and trying to find romance, just remember this, that a kiss will have more of a chance. And your heart will be dancing when you get a glance that it's full of romance. You'll be put in the trance by a beautiful moon. Then you ask your star above. You'll be glad to send the one you're dreaming of. Hand in hand, you will share in the rare and delicious delight. When you're kissed in the mystical, magical light of a California moon.
soon to the magical land of the man in the moon. We'll, we'll have, have fun on a bundle high in the sky, and the stars will twinkle and twinkle by, and forever we'll thrill the sail of the night. Together we'll wander around the wonderful sail of the light. Whew. Nothing from the south, Miss Lana. from him, Lotta. little dash of powder on my face. I know my heart is singing a song to the rub-a-dub-dub of the drum, the sound of the trumpet's blare. All over the land, strike up the band, cause I'll be there when Johnny comes marching home again. Hooray, hooray, we'll give him a hearty welcome then. Hooray, hooray, the men will cheer and the boys will shout. The ladies, they will all turn out and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home.
Diddy. From the Grand Duke Alexis. And something else. Same as always. Open it for me, will you, Mark? Sure. Brother! Pretty, aren't they? Give them to Mother. You mean you don't want them? Mark, the day you bring me that letter from the South, you'll have brought me the best present I could have. And I'll bring it to you day or night. But you know, a lot of it's been more than a year and you still haven't heard from them. I know. But I will. That's why I want to go on the road so I can keep my name in the papers. So he'll know where I am. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, look. We've got what we've been praying for. Peace. <laughs> The war is over. Look. <laughs> oh, Bob! <laughs> oh, it's over. You, you said it went in, but it's been so high, I can't believe it. It's over. Oh, but I I know what this means to you. Oh, Mom. It's over. Yes, baby. It's over. Lotta, they came, they're here. Two letters, two. Oh, Mart. Oh, thank you, Lord. Here, Mama, this is for you. My dearest love, I'm writing this from what we call an army hospital. The doctors promised me I'll be up and around in a few days. Then, if I can get through the Yankee lines, I'll be coming north to find you. He's coming to New York. He's coming back. My darling, sometimes during that interval between blowing out my lamp and the coming of sleep, it seems I can hear you singing. Well, this was mailed a month ago. Why, he could be here right now. Oh, how do I look? They're yelling for you out there. You'll have to give them something. They'll tear the place apart. Oh, let him wait. I've got to look extra special. But he might be out in front right now. It's just like him to surprise me. Lotta. <laughs> he isn't out, Lotta. I read my letter. It's from Tom's doctor. Tom's doctor? What does he say? Tom got up a few days after he wrote to you. He wasn't as well as he wanted to be. There was a relapse. Oh, Mother. What are you trying to say? What does the letter say? The hospital is poorly equipped. They don't have the kind of medicine that Tom needs. The doctor's mighty sorry, but he's afraid that by the time you get this letter...
Ladies and gentlemen, I, I know that this will surprise you, but on this occasion, I, I, I want to sing Dixie. I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times there are not forgotten. Look away. Let us behave like victors. We can be generous in victory. The men of the South were fighting for something they believed in. And when men fight and die for their beliefs, we must respect them for it. To thousands of men on both sides has come the dignity of death. And now, for the sake of those who died, all wounds must be healed. We must remember only that, that once again we're united. That once again we're, we're all Americans. Sing, Lana. Sing. I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times there are not forgotten. Look away. Look away. Look away. Dixie. I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray. Hooray. folks could see the streets out there. Why, the town's gone wild. It's gonna keep up all night, too. Shouting, yelling, singing, drinking. I don't care what anybody says. I'm just gonna have a glass of beer. Do they have to be so raucous about it? The war's over. We've got reason to be happy. Oh, I know how you feel, baby. And it isn't gonna be easy to keep it out of your mind. But you must. I wish you'd go with us tonight. You know, Mr. Barnum's giving this party just for you. And you know you've always wanted to meet Jenny Lind. Couldn't meet anyone tonight. It'd do you good to mix with people, and maybe for a little while you'd forget. Forget? All I've got now is remembering. You won't go on to the party. I'll stay with Laura. I think I'd like to be alone, Mom. I haven't been alone in a long while. A long, long while. Please leave me. I'll be home waiting for you, baby.
Clara. Golden slippers, I'm a fly, I'm a wear. 